Joe Pesci appeared to have the film business at his feet with iconic smash films such as Goodfellas, Home Alone, and My Cousin Vinny yet in the late 1990s. He opted to walk away at the height of his stardom, before making a brief comeback with 2019's The Irishman. The Italian-American actor has only appeared in two live-action films in the 21st century. Many movie stars have worked longer than the now 79-year-old Pesci, so why did he quit so young? On February 9, 1943, Joseph Frank Pesci was born in Newark, New Jersey. He is of Italian descent, and his parents, Angelo and Maria Pesci, worked as forklift drivers and barbers respectively. He began his career as a child actor on stage at age 5, and performed on a TV variety program at age 10. Pesci was an adolescent when he met Frankie Valli and Tommy DeVito, who were in their 20s and 30s. He introduced them to vocalist Bob Gaudio when he was 16, and the trio later teamed up with Nick Massey to form the musical group The Four Seasons. Pesci began his musical career in his 20s, initially as a guitarist and subsequently as a vocalist. Under the stage name Joe Ritchie, he released the album Little Joe Sure Can Sing. In 1968, like other aspiring artists, Pesci had to work a regular day job to make ends meet. He was pursuing music while working full-time as a barber. According to reports, Pesci became well-known and respected in New Jersey for his shaves and haircuts, and many of his clientele were local mafia members. Indeed, criminals were part of everyday life in Joe's hometown. A teenage Pesci once inadvertently enraged a wealthy guy by telling him he was funny while working at a bar. This incident inspired a famous sequence in the film Goodfellas, Pesci and fellow actor Frank Vincent formed the stand-up comedy duo Vincent and Pesci in the mid-1970s. Following their breakthrough on stage, the duo was cast in The Death Collector aka Family Enforcer, a film that drew the attention of Robert Nero and Martin Scorsese. At the time, Scorsese and Nero were working on Raging Bull, a film based on the life of boxer Jake LaMotor. While Vincent was cast in the supporting part of Salvi Bats, Pesci was cast in the significant role of Lomboda's brother Joey. Raging Bull was just a medium economic success when it was released in 1980, but it received rave reviews from critics. While Scorsese and Nero received most of the attention, Pesci was also lauded as an excellent new talent and nominated for his first Academy Award. Pesci was immediately in demand as a film actor, in the years that followed saw him appear in both prestige films reuniting with Nero in Once Upon a Time in America and more lowbrow fare. In the Lethal Weapon films, he played the comedic relief role of Leo Getz. Then, in 1990, Pesci reunited with Scorsese and Nero for their best-known picture, the fact-based crime drama Goodfellas. In addition to being cast alongside Nero, Ray Liotta, and Paul Sorvino, Pesci helped construct the story based on his own mob experiences. This includes the now famous What Do You Mean, I'm Funny event, which inspired the film's most famous scene. Goodfellas was a critical and commercial success. Joe's performance earned him his second Best Supporting Actor nomination at the Academy Awards, which he won this time. Joe Pesci's only Oscar win was for Goodfellas. He made his mark with one of the Oscar's shortest acceptance speeches. Well, it's my privilege, thank you. This would have been enough to make 1990 a successful year for Pesci. Still, he also participated in a very small-scale Christmas family comedy that turned out to be a blockbuster, Home Alone, in which he portrayed bungling thief Harry Lyme. Pesci was now firmly established as a bankable performer. He played a noteworthy supporting part in the critically acclaimed JFK in 1991. In 1992, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, Lethal Weapon 3, and My Cousin Vinny were released. Not long after, Pesci would return to work with Scorsese and Nero on another epic crime movie, Casino, in 1995. By this point, Pesci had established himself as one of Hollywood's most improbable stars. However, after reprising his role as Leo Getz in 1998's Lethal Weapon 4, he quietly retired from acting. Pesci gave up acting to concentrate on his music career. His second album, Vincent LaGuardia Gambini Sings Just For You, was released the same year as Lethal Weapon 4. 
However, in the two decades that followed, Pesci released no new music and appeared in only three films. A cameo in Nero's 2006 featured The Good Shepherd, a supporting role in 2010's Love Ranch, and a Snickers commercial in 2011. Pesci also spent time competing in a few celebrity golf competitions, but he mostly faded from the public eye. Joe Pesci, who keeps his personal life quiet, has been married three times. He married for the first time in 1964 and has one daughter from that marriage, whom he has never named publicly. He married again before meeting his third wife, actress Claudia Haro. He co-starred with her in Casino. Haro and Pesci married between 1988 and 1992 and have one daughter, singer Tiffany Pesci. Claudia Haro married stunt actor Garrett Warren after Pesci. A shooter shot Warren four times outside his house after Warren and Haro filed for divorce in 2000. Haro eventually pleaded no guilty to hiring the hitman in a murder attempt and received a sentence of 12 years and four months in prison. Pesci married model Angie Everhart in 2007, but the couple divorced a year later. Because Pesci seldom does interviews, information on what he's been up to since leaving Hollywood is few. He was slated to play Angelo Ruggiero in the infamous 2018 film Gotti, but backed out due to a dispute and then sued the filmmakers for $3 million. Although his comeback to acting in 2019's The Irishman sparked a lot of enthusiasm, Pesci had to be persuaded to do it. According to reports, he finally decided to make the film after Nero and Scorsese begged him 40 times. In his words, Nero persuaded Pesci, come on, who knows whether we'll ever get this chance again. Scorsese claims that Pesci agreed when Netflix got into the picture because then we had the support. Joe Pesci and Robert Nero have been in seven films together and have been friends for 50 years. Pesci received his third Best Supporting Actor Oscar nomination. Brad Pitt won the prize for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that night, but given that Pesci did not attend the event, it's improbable he felt passionate about the topic. The music comes next. Third album, Pesci. Still Singing was released in 2019. Point Nothing indicates that Pesci intends to return to the screen. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Pesci fortune is roughly $50 million. As a guy approaching his 80s, it's hard to blame him for wanting to enjoy his retirement, and considering his body of work, he'll be recognized as a real cinema icon. Joe Pesci has recently lived in an Art Deco-inspired waterfront home on the Jersey Shore. He expects to retire to California, where he wants to play more golf. After selling the property in 2021, Joe Pesci is someone we will always like and respect, but we will never accuse him of being funny. Get the f out of here, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had him. I almost had him.